It's a big one. It's, it's actually an historic meeting, I think, as uh, Van Buren is going to transition to its first full-time fire department or part full-time fire department. The board met yesterday for over two hours on most of the issues that we're dealing with today. Uh, these, uh, the ones that we were absolutely together with are on our consent agenda. They'll be voted on together in one minute, and they include approval of meeting minutes, schedules, fees for different departments, reappointment of the Environmental Commission consists of David Brownlee, the chairman, Tony Gibson, who's came here today, thank you, Tony, Norm DeBuck, who's, who's also served, in addition, a new member is being voted into the Environmental Committee, and that's Peter Creole. Peter is a passionate environmentalist and recently formed a town hall type meeting at the BYC on phosphate and phosphorus in Belleville Lake. Hundred, a couple of hundred people uh, attended, I believe. Uh, we welcome these four gentlemen. We all thank you for your service to Van Buren Township and the Environmental Commission. Updates to some of our director and employee policies will also be voted on. One of those, importantly, will end full, time, full retiree medical benefits for new employees hired after September 1st. It will replace this with a retiree medical savings plan. And finally, we are adjusting, adjusting the language in our firefighter union contract to allow for the hiring of six new full-time firefighters. Now, this is big news. Following the consent agenda, we will present the new part-time full-time fire proposal after each board member will have two minutes to comment, which will be followed up with the clerk, Clerk Wright, swearing in our, our new six full-time firefighters. After this, we will have a public hearing on our budget, on the Van Buren 2020 budget. A public hearing has been posted uh, throughout in the newspapers. It, uh, the public hearing for the budget is a time for the public to speak on the budget, not the board. Items in our new business will include purchasing a Chevy Tahoe for the fire department, setting our water and sewer fees for the upcoming year, hiring two communication specialists, which are here for our new communications department, renovating the interior of the Belleville Area Museum. Beginning, we're gonna begin fixing up French Landing Park with about $120,000 in grant money. We're gonna begin uh, today with clearing some trees, weeds, and br uh, brush contracts. We're going to have a first reading to modify a zoning ordinance for the lakefront, which will allow some unusually shaped parcels to be developed on the lake. And they'll be voting, uh, we'll, we'll be voting an exception to the state's requirement to charge employees 20% for health care. And finally, we'll be purchasing a new digital sign for Van Buren Township Hall. That's all. That's enough. Okay. Uh, next item. Adoption of agenda. Can I get a motion? Through chair. Uh, Trustee Martin? Make a motion that we adopt the revised agenda as presented. Okay. Uh, Trustee, uh, you guys, what? Okay. All right. I got Martin. Uh, all right. I've got a motion for approval by Trustee Martin, support by Treasurer Bud to approve the agenda. Is there any discussion? Hearing none, all in favor? Aye. All right. Motion passes. Next item is adoption of the consent agenda, which is adopted by this uh, this week. His turn is Trustee Miller. Please read the entire consent agenda. Adoption of the consent agenda includes board meeting minutes of September 3rd, special board meeting minutes of September 23rd, closed session minutes of September 23rd, prepaid list of September 5th, prepaid list of September 12th, prepaid list of September 19th, prepaid list of September 26th, voucher list of September 17th, voucher list of October 1st, approval of the 2020 holiday schedule, approval of the 2020 Board of Trustees meeting schedule, approval of the resolution 2019-20, the 2020 department fee schedules. 13 is approval of the reappointment of Peter, I'm sorry, the appointment of Peter Creel to the Environmental Commission with a term to expire 10-1-2020. Approval of the reappointment of Tony Gibson to the Environmental Commission with a term to expire 10-1-2020. 15, approval of the reappointment of David Brownlee to the Environmental Commission with a term to expire 10-1-2022. 16, approval of the reappointment of Norm DeBuck to the Environmental Commission with a term to expire 10-1-2022. 
17, approval of the update to section 3.01, eligibility of benefits and policies and procedures manual. 18, approval of the update in the, uh, the salaried employees manual with language to reflect the retiree bene benefits change effective September 1, 2019 to receive health care. Now, hang on one minute. We're striking 18, correct? We are striking All right. 18. 19, approval of the update language to hire full-time firefighters in, in the uh, math contract. Approval of the updates to math, POLC, patrol and dispatch, and POLC command. Contracts to reflect the retiree benefits change effective September 1, 2019. Four new hires, anyone hired prior to September 1st, 2019, will not be affected by these changes. Okay, I have a motion by Trustee Miller. Can I have support? Support. Support by Treasurer Bud. Okay, uh, consent agenda. I have motion for support. A motion, and I have support. Hearing no for the discussion. All in favor? Aye. 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 This motion passes. Before we begin our next series, because we've just now approved the, the township to hire six full-time firefighters, we've approved the finances to uh, uh, to properly make it happen. I want Tony Gibson to come up. Tony Gibson has long served us in the Environmental Commission. Uh, it's a, a great group of people, and we'd like to just have you come up and shake our hands and sit, so we can say thank you. <laughs> thank you, Tony. Tony, we're going to be going through a little bit. Uh, okay, we're all set. Okay, next item is a presentation. I'm going to start by doing a reading. I'd like if the chief would uh, chief would come up and the uh, uh, director of public safety, Mr. Uh, director Lorraine. I've made a, a I've written out a presentation, a short one. Dear colleagues, and after we do this, you guys can make a little presentation, and then the, the board's going to each get two minutes to, to make comment on this historic, if you want to. Yes. Dear colleagues and residents, dear colleagues and residents, today we are preparing to move the township into the next phase of growth in the area of public safety. The proposal today raises the level of security for our residents in the areas of fire safety and quickens our ability to respond to our residents' medical emergencies. We are looking at hiring six full-time firefighters. Over the last four years, our part-time firefighting and medical response force has dwindled. Due, this is not due to us, it's due to national unemployment. The country has experienced a shortage of firefighters entering the fire service trades. It has become increasingly difficult to get firefighters to come work as part-timers. And, and when we do get a part-timer, they increasingly are finding full-time jobs in short order with other fire departments. This leaves us with yet another shift that needs to be manned by others. This has caused us to be extremely dependent on overworked part-timers who are making time and a half and has forced a, a reliance on blended rate officers. The overall proposal is to augment our 100% part-time firefighting force by hiring six full-time firefighters. The rest of our force will be filled in and maintained in the manner it has been maintained up until now. This proposal has been a year in the making. It has been extensively discussed in administration meetings and in the, budgets, uh, the board's budget hearings. The current budget reflects these numbers for moving forward with the six full-time hires. These numbers have, have been prepared by the fire chief and reviewed by the finance group. And then we hired Plant Moran to review those numbers. Plant Moran maintains that the numbers appear fiscally correct and the logic toward their development is sound. They did, however, say this would cause a large problem with our OPEB, which is our retiree medical position on our balance sheets. We have held off on this move to a full, to a part full-time, to hiring the six full-timers, until such time that the township removed retiree medical going forward for all its new employees. We replaced it with retiree health care savings plans that were approved by the board today, a minute ago, during the consent vote. This proposal will, will, will increase our capability to respond to our residents' medical and fire emergencies. 
These new hires will be hired without lifetime med retiree medical benefits and should reduce some existing costs within our system. This po proposal should reduce some overtime expenses by current firefighters. The board is in agreement. This will both increase resident service levels while maintaining a frugal overall budget. The township is done with the rebuilding of the fire department. Equipment and facilities have been redone. In addition, for the last three or four years, the township has banked into a fire capital fund $100,000 each year. This fund is designed to eliminate future big ticket fire expenses that pose a great difficulty for the general tax fund. Uh, it would be difficult to afford these things. This will allow us to uh, purchase big ticket items for fire through a savings account that we are building up. With this final action of hiring these six employees, this, de this department, fire department, should be, a sus should be sustainable in finance, in manpower, equipment, and in facilities well into the future. Thank you. Um, would you like to make, say some words and then we can ask the board? I think you said a lot to Mr. Supervisor. <laughs> Dean, um, what an exciting time for public safety, specifically the fire department tonight. That I'm here as the director and we had the fire chief and the board, we can actually say these, that, like you said, that this is the first full-time group of firefighters we'll be hiring. We'll be moving into a hybrid full-time, part-time system staff department with promotions of these six full-time firefighters this evening. This much needed move is a significant change from how we have traditionally staffed our fire stations in the past and will be bringing added staffing stability to the department in the future. In part, this change was needed due to the constant difficulty in recruiting qualified candidates and the inability to retain paid on call personnel who eventually leave for a full time employment elsewhere. As our department continues to evolve, this move was essential in providing better control on staffing of our fire stations retaining quality trained personnel while continually providing the best service and response to our community. I want to thank our negotiation team, the Michigan Association of Firefighters Union, the township board members, and the Chief Brow and her staff for all the collaborative efforts during this process. Finally, I'd like, I, would be, I would like to acknowledge and congratulate the soon to be sworn in full time firefighters of our department. We're going to have the full-time firefighters to be. Come on up here, please. Clerk Wright, would you like to, uh, would you like to swear in the firefighters? And then we can uh, go around the board and see what the board has to say. Clerk, do you want to face them to audience or so we can get some Kodak moments? That's, yeah. yeah. wants to stand up we can stand behind this group and get into the picture I'll be right back here you can stand back here and you'll be over their heads okay, okay. we're photo bombing we're photo bombing yeah. of course we are Get a picture. What's that? Pick up shop this way so you can get us into it too. No, no, no. Over there, we're um, over there in the middle aisle, shooting this way, high enough. Back them up. Back them up. Okay, okay, yeah. Firefighters, can you guys all back up to this? Slide this on. The other one's over there too. There we go. This works. Should, all of you should be in the, this picture. Come on. 
That's great. Cheese. <laughs> Jason. Fine, Jason. Thank you. Thank you. We expect you to protect this. Thank you. Welcome right now. We hope you have a successful year. Thank you. And we want you to stay. Thank you. No leaving us. Congratulations. Congratulations. Glad to see you. I got you guys already. You good. Congratulations. Good job. Thank you. Well deserved. Congratulations. All right. You've been here forever. Well deserved. Uh, I'm going to uh, switch side. Who would like to start? I, how about if you go for the board? I just did. did. So <laughs> I, think, I have a comment I would like to make. Okay, Treasurer Bud. Um, when I started here, we had a part-time police department. Our reserves were paid a dollar a year so they could get their Malazzi training and carry a gun for the department. And then we finally went to hourly, so they got paid for the hours they worked. And then along came, a, and we made that historical move, and we had a full-time police department, of which Greg was a part of. So it is with great honor that I sit here and now see that we now have a full-time fire department. And I'm so pleased that we have both these organizations to protect the residents of Van Buren Township. And I might also say that when Amy started here, she was a volunteer firefighter too. So to see this department grow, it, it just fills me with a whole lot of pride. Thank you very much. That's wonderful. Maybe uh, uh, Trustee Miller? Yeah, this is a historical moment. I think this is a good start to begin with, and uh, hopefully we can add in the future. So I, I'm just glad that we've come to this point, that we all worked hard together to make this happen. So. I'll leave Trustee oh, very good. Nice. Trustee Frazier. I'd just like to say public safety is priority one, and we have a great police and fire department already, but I've worked for three years uh, of my term, and uh, when Amy, I mean the chief, got, got hired, I spoke to her and said, we need full time. Make that happen. And she did. Because of Sherry. <laughs> so I think it's a great, a great advantage to our residents, their safety. They can get better service, and uh, not better service, but quicker service. And we need to move, we need to, we should have moved in that direction for a while. And I'm glad it's happening today. This is a historic, historic moment for the township. And I hope our residents appreciate um, the new firefighters that are on board. We thank you. Just quick. Right. Just, just real quick. I guess uh, there's three things that I hear when you when you move into anyone moving to a township or a city or wherever. Three things they ask: Is the community safe? What kind of schools you have? And how much are the taxes? <laughs> so, our taxes are low. Uh, we have a safe community, and this is a part of just making it safer. We've, this has been something that the treasurer and myself as negotiating. We've gone around and around in the previous boards, talking about this for years. This is my 11 year on the board. Don't seem like I know I don't look that old, but it's this is my 11 year on the board, and it's something that's been talked about for, with previous directors, previous chiefs, and it's just nice to see that it finally happened. Uh, it's time to show that we're a community that's growing in the right direction. It's a great thing. Mr. Wayne? I am, I am kind of speechless right now. When I was first elected, this is one of the things that I wanted to see in Van Buren Township was a full-time fire department. And now that day has finally come. This ensures that we have guaranteed coverage 24 hours a day, 365 days a year, to protect our homes, property, and businesses in Van Buren Township. 
We have state-of-the-art equipment. Uh, we have state-of-the-art full-time and fully well-trained firefighters, and I think this is a good day for the township. I think this moves us forward. This makes us a better community, and we will, we will be better for it. And I, I am proud of the board, and I'm proud to be part of this board that has made this historic uh, moment come true. Trustee White. I've lived in this community for almost 60 years, and it, it's, it has advanced tremendously uh, in, in that period of time. We had two very small fire stations uh, when I first lived here, and it has gradually become even better with two state-of-the-art fire stations now, one on the south side, one on the north side. As we advance, then we need to do what is necessary to protect our residents, our citizens, and our communities surrounding us if, if and when they, they need help. But this is a great advancement. It will be a tremendous benefit to our 30,000 residents. And I, too, am fully supportive of our public safety department, police, fire, ordinance, and the uh, whole shebang. And I want to thank uh, Chief Brell for working hard to achieve this. Uh, also, our uh, Chief uh, Justin uh, Jason Wright, and also our Director Greg Lorraine. The three of these uh, hi highly knowledgeable and educated employees have worked hard to make sure that this happens. The Public Safety Department is my number one priority, and it's the Board's number one priority, and we should make sure beyond any other expenditures that we have to make sure that we provide our residents and citizens, visitors, people passing through with the highest quality of public safety department care in the fire department, police department that is possible for us. I, I commend all three of our uh, uh, public safety officials, commend all of the officers, all the employees in the, in the police department dispatch uh, and also all the firefighters there. So this is a huge moment in the history of our township and it's something that, that I am really happy to see. And, uh, you know, I was a, a very young man when uh, I came to the community. Now I'm uh, the oldest person on the board, so you can th know that I'm thrilled. And uh, we've had the opportunity to use public safety a couple of times, and, and our experience has been top-notch. We have a a1 department now five star i think considering our community the tax monies that we spend and i am very pleased to see this moment happen thank you officers firefighters i i i guess i'm about the only one that was dragged down this road kicking and screaming no 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 <laughs> so <laughs> chief browse shaking her head and director lorraine um we had one of the most cost effective fire departments in the country. We hired Amy Brow, our new chief, because she was one of the finest trainers we've ever met. She had these incredible credentials. We then set out to try and build the most professional part-time fire force in the, in, the, in the area. We bought them all new trucks. We bought them new ladder trucks, new turnout gear. We upgraded the facilities. We rebuilt their electrical. We rebuilt everything. We made it into a, a place to come, and people did come. The problem was they became so good that everybody wanted them and they all had to they all went because that's what career people do. They get the best they go to the best place to get the best training and then they go get jobs. We've worked on this for over a year. Uh, Chief Brown Greg, uh, Director Lorraine showed me basically how they could probably do this. We found every single pro a problem that could possibly happen and we think we fixed them from retiree medical care to wordings and languages to uh, the bump, bump rates on, on shifts. We've gone over this 10 ways to Sunday. As a result, I can, I'm speaking now to the residents, our budget shows a flat line in the fire department based on hiring six full-time firefighters. We, this board methodically did its work for the last few months, created the framework to allow this, these six full-timers to come on and still keep this department as one of the most effective departments from a financial uh, standpoint. Uh, we're very proud of it. 
We think it's we think because we fixed it all up, it's going to last. We've created a savings account for when she does need a new or the de department needs a new ladder truck or a new uh, fire truck. They're not going to have to go take that year's tax tax roll to, to pay for it. There will be a, a, a savings account that this board has built up and, and we've maintained it. Uh, I'm very excited for it. Um, I can't wait to see it in operation. So thank you very much for putting up with me for three years. In fact, one of the jokes was when we were interviewing Amy, I said, Amy, about the only thing you could do to get yourself fired here is to say the word full-time fire. <laughs> there you go. There you go. So, um, uh, but I, I'm, I'm along now. We, we had a lot of fixing to do. It's fixed, and I'm really, really happy we could. How many of our firefighters are from Van Buren? Yeah, okay. Quite a few. That's a lot. Four, all right. Four to six. Uh, very much. Thank you very much. We thank you so much because we expect you to save our lives someday. So thank you. Anybody else? Yeah. <laughs> I'm going to move along with the agenda, but I'm going to take a minute to let you guys escape. And I suggest you do that because I think we've got two more hours to go. <laughs> Are we taking a commercial break? Uh, yeah, take a, take a 60 second break here. Get out while you can. <laughs> We will charter band, charter township of Van Buren. We'll go. To, we'll be going through an election for the Van Buren School Public Schools to uh, vote on a uh, renewal of a refinance of a millage. Uh, if you need any information, feel free to come by the clerk office to get the exact reading on that on the language. Also, please uh, do your due diligence, register to vote, or if you haven't registered to vote, make sure that you. Register to vote absentee. That's a new thing that's just been voted in. You don't have to have a reason to vote absentee now. You just call and say, I want to vote absentee. We, I, we can send you a ballot or you can come by and, and, and pick up one. Uh, that's it. Okay. Our September Day Senior Center is going to be having a Veterans Day luncheon, a Veterans Day luncheon, November 7th. It's Thursday. Typically about 150 people go to this. It's sponsored by the Yankee Air Museum, the Regency. They do a really nice job. Veterans Day luncheon, November 7th at our September Days Senior Center. Excuse me, I'm noon. Uh, Judge Bud. The Van Buren Township is updating its community-wide master plan in the document that establishes a future vision for the community. And the master plan will guide decision-making processes for the future land uses. This master plan workshop is open to the public 
and we are asking you to drop in and share your comments with those that will be here. It is Wednesday, October the 2nd, 2019, from 3 to 8 p.m., which is all you know is tomorrow. So come out, share your vision with the township, and we hope to see you there. Thank you. A treasurer Miller. A trustee Miller. The Household Hazardous Waste Collection Day will occur on Saturday, October 12th, from 9 to 2. This is a free one-day drop-off for Van Buren Township residents that will be located at U.S. Ecology East Parking Lot. That address is 49350 North I-94 Service Drive. You can also call 734-699-8926 for a list of acceptable items or visit www.vanburen-mi.org. Thank you. What was, the time, what was the time again? I'm sorry. 9 to 2. Trustee uh, Frazier. Well, they saved the fun part to the last. The candy loop is going to be Saturday, October 26th. It's free. It's from 4 to 6 p.m. And the little ghosts and goblins in your family can come and walk a candy path um, and get tricks or, or get treats. <laughs> get treats. <laughs> get treats from local businesses. And uh, there'll be a DJ playing uh, Halloween music, so it'll be lots of fun. It's a great alternative to walking, having your children walk door to door. And if you feel uh, in the mood, we would appreciate you bringing a food item like peanut butter, canned tuna, applesauce, any uh, non-perishables, and those items will be collected and given to local food banks. And we're also looking for businesses to take part in this endeavor. And uh, they can call 699-8921 for more information. Or go to uh, the township website at vanburen.mi.org. And it, th this whole thing is going to take place at Quirk Park, right behind the township hall. And if it is inclement weather because this is Michigan and you never know if it is inclement weather they will have it inside in the hallways so come on out bring your young people and get lots of candy okay last year I believe it was in indoors yeah, it was. yeah okay we're going now to the public hearing I need a motion to go into public hearing I make a motion to go into public trustee hearing. Frazier Support. trustee Miller all uh, non-debatable. All in favor of going to the public hearing? Aye. 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 Opposed? We're in public hearing. Right now we're in public hearing. This the, uh, Public hearings are required and they're, 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 they're posted. The public hearing is to receive public comment. It's not a time for the board. It's a time for the public to make, uh, to make discussion on the budget. So is there anybody from the public that wants to speak on the budget or any of its sections? Is there anybody from the public? Hearing none, can I get a motion to go out of public hearing? I make a motion to come out of public hearing. Support. Okay. And that's, uh, was that White? Mine. What? Mine. Mine. Okay. Mine. Okay. Miller and Martin. All right. All non debatable. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? <coughs> motion passes. We move to public comment. Is there anybody that wishes to pu make public comment on today's agenda? Hearing none, we're moving to new unfinished business, which we have none. We're into new business. We begin. Um, let me get caught up for a second here. Okay. First, uh, first item is to consider approval of a 2019 Chevy Tahoe for the fire department. Chief Brow, please, for an overview. Yeah, Chief. Motion, please. Oh, excuse yeah. me. Chief yeah. Chair. Uh, who said that? Clerk Wright. No, I see one. Uh, Treasurer Bud. I see make four. a motion. Yeah. We approve. Mm -hmm. Go ahead. The purchase of a 2019 Chevy Tahoe to be utilized by the off-duty shift supervisor of the fire department in the amount of 46497 and to be expensed out of the 219 capital outlay uh, fire department account. Okay. Uh, Trish, uh, tr and Clerk Wright, I heard you second it. Okay. Chief and Marshall. Yes, the... Um, Tahoe is going to be the supervisor's vehicle for the on-duty supervisor, the fifth person. Um, the reason we went with Tahoe over the Explorer is the amount of cubic space inside the vehicle. 
It also has a 100,000 mile warranty on the powertrain and it comes pre-wired with the wires for some of the emergency lighting so it doesn't void any factory warranties so it helps with longevity of the vehicle. Okay, are there any questions by the board? It's in our budget, we'll go ahead, Trustee Frazier. to say that we are getting it through the statewide bid. It's being purchased, so we are getting the lowest price for the vehicle. It's not something that we went out and shopped for. We are getting the best price we could for our, our equipment. Okay. All right, I have a most by Treasurer Bud supported by Clerk Wright for the purchase of 2019 Chevy Tahoe. Hearing no further discussion, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion passes. Next item is to consider approval of resolution 2019-21, the 2020 water and sewer fee schedules. How much is your water bill going to be next year? Yeah. Trustee Martin. I make a motion we approve resolution 2019-21, the 2020 water and sewer fee schedules. Support. Trustee Miller. Okay. Uh, Director Taylor, could you take it? Yes, I'm uh, presenting uh, for your approval the fiscal year 2020 water and sewer rates fee schedule. And this uh, proposed rate recommendation was reviewed and recommended to the Board of Trustees for approval. Um, based on our estimated projections for this fiscal year proposed budget, we recommended a 5% rate increase to our water and sewer customers. And here's some of the factors that contributed to that 5% increase. First, for every 1% rate increase, it generates approximately $80,000 in revenue. Our anticipated cost increases for fiscal year 2020 will reach approximately $630,000. The largest chunk of our increased costs are from Wayne County's Rouge Valley Sanitary System, which totals over $360,000. The proposed 5% rate increase will generate approximately $400,000 for fiscal year 2020. The operational costs have been scheduled to decrease by approximately 20,000 in that same budget year. And approximately 200,000 of operational fund money will be used to supplement the gap. The fees and charges for 2020 will remain the same for the fourth consecutive year. So none of the fees or charges themselves in this package have been increased. And on a final note, which I know will make Supervisor McNamara very happy, that even with this 5% rate increase, Van Buren Township will still have the lowest water rates in Western Wayne County. Yay. <laughs> um, I, I'll, I'll just begin by saying that um, I'm really happy with the way our water and sewer department operates. I've been around water and sewer my whole life, well, at least 30, 40 years of it. Um, it's as good a system as there is out there, probably better than any that I really know of. Um, Director Taylor's done a wonderful job. I never worry about him, um, and when there is a problem, he quick, quick, quickly comes to me and he pro provides me with real solutions. Um, the increase is expected, but that's good. Just, just, uh, Miller. Well, on average, in a year, how much of an increase will this be to the average homeowner? And when will this take place? When, when will they see it on their bill? The, uh, the rate increase will take place January 1st. It will begin January 1st, 2020. And um, the average increase based on the usage of 20,000 gallons in a three month time period, we bill quarterly. And in that quarterly period, we expect the rate to increase the average 20,000 gallon user approximately anywhere between $8.70 to about nine and a quarter, somewhere in that ballpark for three months. So are we still the lowest um, township for rates? Um, Do we still hold that record? Western Wayne County we are, and that includes cities too. We have a comparison that we look at, um, and I compared what we are projecting for our rates for next year against what customers or other communities are already charging for this year. And even with our 5% rate increase, we're still at the bottom, and that's without the added increases that those communities will experience in the coming year. It's important to, to say. Thank you. Trustee Frazier. Uh, basically, I, I mean, I commend um, Director Taylor for an excellent job of uh, 
keeping on top of what's coming down the line for water expenses because um, and keeping our water system safe and trying to get the best price we can for it. Um, but the reason it has to go up, these are things with, they're not in our purview. We can't control what Wayne County does and what increases they take and they pa have to pass them on to their members in their system. So we're kind of held hostage there. We have to raise the rates because of what other other entities uh, do. So it's not that we're trying to raise the rate, it's that we have to stay in line with the other uh, entities that control the water system beyond us. Your point, Trustee Frazier, um, over 70%, about 73% of our expenditures on a year annually go to paying for services. Mm -hmm. So less than 20, about 25% of our budget actually stays in the township paying for everything, which really doesn't give us a lot of wiggle room in terms of reductions because our costs internally continue to increase as well. Okay, thank you. So, any other questions? I can make a comment. As I stated last year, uh, my wife and I, you know, we're elderly now, so we've traveled quite a bit. And we had the experiences of tasting water in the south, in the Appalachian Mountains, out west, the Midwest. And the water that comes through our faucet is some of the best water that we have ever had the opportunity to drink. And I'm very appreciative of that. And uh, I, I hope that mo all of our residents understand what a valuable resource we have. And we should never, ever run out of water, uh, you know, not, not uh, discounting uh, breakage and, and things like that. But our water department is an outstanding water department. And our water quality, I'm very pleased that we have the water quality that we have. So when I turn on my faucet, I know I can drink a glass of water and I'll, I'll be safe and it will be taste good. I appreciate that. In this community, my job, um, I take it very seriously, the quality of the water. And uh, as a matter of fact, safety of our customers um, is the number one priority uh, above and beyond all other things, regardless of the cost or whatever, which we, uh, uh, you know, we still attempt to control those things but the safety of the product, because this, as I, as I understand, this is a product, one of the few products that, are, that people actually ingest. They take it into themselves, and so it's very important that what we're producing and providing people is safe to take in, into themselves. So okay. take it very seriously. Thank you very much, Director. We all set? Mm -hmm. I have a motion by Trustee Martin, and I was supported by Trustee Miller, uh, for the new water and sewer fee schedule. Hearing no further comment, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? This motion passes. I would like to take item number three and four together. This is to consider approval of the personal service agreements for Alicia Albrecht and for Ryan Nichols. Can I get a motion for approval? I'll make a motion. Steve Miller? Report. Mr. Clark Wright. Uh, I'll take Miller on the second one and Frazier. <laughs> I got them all. <laughs> okay. All right. Um, I guess I'll give the presentation since we've already heard most of it. Alicia, uh, could you both come up? Um, go to the podium over there if you might, don't mind. I'll start with Alicia May Schlunt Bodine. She just got married, correct? Oh, yes. Albrecht. Yeah. Okay. Congratulations. Congratulations. Yeah. Thank you. Congratulations. Thank you yeah. So she's a graduate of Central Michigan. She has a, a Bachelor's of Applied Arts in integrated, in integrated Public Relations, Media, Technology, Production, and Design. Uh, she crea uh, she's creative, of course. Uh, she works, she's, she's worked with video and cable groups to form summer camps uh, with the schools and to, work, uh, to perform weekly uh, intern camps with the schools. We're counting on her basically, among other things, to help us out in cable 
a little bit graphics and training, building community, which she sounds like she's very strong with and has built 25 or 30 people into her internship program. Yeah. She'll do community building with the schools and with our community groups. These are some of the areas that she'll, she'll hopefully thrive in. Uh, she was responsible for the city meetings in Ann Arbor. Uh, she managed their uploads, their videos, and their cable. Um, she worked also with the YMCA, and she's done TED Talks. So uh, she's my, uh, broadcast and, uh, and shot those. So we're very excited to have you um, in the group. We had like 150 people trying for this job. Uh, there was a lot of, uh, of good people, and we're very happy. Ryan um, uh, is, has a little bit of different skill set, okay? Uh, more graphic arts, more uh, video. Uh, he worked for actually for which cruise line? Princess. Princess Cruise for a year, and where every single day he had to produce a video of what happened on that ship and have it ready for the next morning. That's high pressure and a lot of work. Um, he's also uh, adept at, um, remember Robert, the amazing video guy? Sure. This is Robert. He's Adobe <laughs> Premiere, Adobe After Effects, Final Cut Pro, Adobe Audition, Adobe Photoshop. He can clean up the photos that we use into our magazines. He can, uh, he can set our videos. He can perform our videos. Um, uh, uh, he can make us look good. Okay. That's what we want. <laughs> yes. He graduated Western Michigan University with a bachelor's degree in film video and media studies with a minor in creative writing. He also does journalism. Um, so, uh, he'll, you know, obviously we have a magazine, we have a, whole, we have a whole slew of projects that we're ready to sick them on. Um, does anybody want to ask any questions? I watched your videos, both of you, your community uh, one, yeah. Alicia and Ryan, your edible wow, it made me hungry. <laughs> <laughs> but you could see the talent that the both of you b bring to our township, and I'm thrilled. And we're getting different talent in different ways from the two of you, and the combination is exactly what we're looking for. Mm -hmm. So we're excited to have you aboard. Sure. So welcome. We're not gonna have any problem with the Bronco Chippewa robbery, are we? Yeah, <laughs> <be> interesting. <laughs> <laughs> no. <laughs> no, no, I think we. I think I think you guys are gonna make a good uh, addition to the township. Yeah. Thank uh, you both. Um, any other questions, Trustee Frazier? I'd just like to say, Alicia, I was impressed with your professional organizations that you belong to and that you volunteer in different groups, and you're an advocate of community media, which is an important aspect. And then, Ryan, when you were in college, you watched way too much, uh, too many movies, I guess, and so your buddy said, why don't you make movies? So it had an impression on you, yeah. so it became your, you took film and media program at Western, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, so that's great. And I like the fact that in your uh, resume, you said you want to help people tell their story. And we need to get Van Buren Township's story out so that our residents and our surrounding communities know what a great place uh, Van Buren Township is to work, play, and uh, live in. So we appreciate it. Thank you. Anybody else? Trustee White. Welcome to Van Buren Township. I think this will be a very enjoyable uh, arena for you to participate in and to work in and to produce the types of uh, media that uh, is expected by our community from you. My granddaughter is a video photographer for WYMT in Kalamazoo, I think it is, if there's the figures. And she graduated from Central Michigan also in, in that probably the same year that you did. But I'm pleased to see two young ambitious folks that are willing to come and work with us and help us out and to do what's necessary to promote our community and do a good job on board meetings and on our work studies and reporting everything uh, to uh, our community. Thank you both very much for coming to our township and we will love you and make sure that, that you're successful. I have a motion by Trustee Miller. 
uh, for Alicia. And it's supported by Clerk Wright. And then I have a, trust, uh, a motion by Trustee Miller, supported by Trustee Frazier for Ryan Nichols. Hearing no further comments, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion passes. Welcome. Come on up uh, and shake our hands. So start right down there and move your way through. It's a long time. Yeah. Congratulations. Remember back on this Welcome happy time. Thank you. Uh, you re well, yeah, you can stay. <laughs> Whatever you want to do. <laughs> okay. Have to. Next <laughs> item is to consider approval of the selection of master maintenance for the painting and flooring renovations at the Belleville Area Museum. Uh, Director Best. Through the chair. Uh, Treasurer Bud. I make a motion we approve the selection of master maintenance for the painting and flooring renovations at the Belleville Area Museum. Support. Treasurer Miller. All right. Uh, Director Best, please. Uh, on August 13th, 2019, Van Buren Township went out for quotations to find a firm to complete painting and flooring at the Belleville Area Museum. As we move forward, uh, both with our communications department and our full-time firefighters, it's also important for us not to forget the past. Uh, the Belleville Area Museum at Old Van Buren Township Hall is the place where we remember our past. And so it's time, now that we're upgrading the future, it's time to upgrade our past. So we have went out and gotten a uh, quote for new floor and quote for painting at the, the BAM Museum. Um, after careful review and consideration of the proposals, the Department of Public Services is recommending master maintenance to provide uh, the choice, the, as a provider of choice for the project at a base bid cost of 32,984. This will be paid out of the building and grounds capital outlay and this expense was uh, uh, budgeted in the budget for the museum. Uh, the scope of work includes painting on the first and second floors, as well as new flooring throughout the first and second floors, except for in the area where there's existing hardwood floor upstairs. Um, every, uh, working with the Department of Public Services and Museum, museum Director Dallas, um, we will coordinate with the township's interior designer to pick a color and a floor pattern, uh, we will make sure that it will enhance the architectural and historical aspects of the museum and uh, really uh, bring out the luxury uh, that the existing hardwood upstairs can provide. Um, if after today, if the board approves the bid, um, uh, the be in week of October 13th, I believe it's the 13th, the painting and flooring will begin and will end uh, by the 26th. Currently, right now, we have a company inventorying and packing the museum up um, so that everything will have an inventory and everything will be ready to go and then uh, put back when it's done. With that, I'd be happy to answer any of your questions about this exciting project. Oh, Trustee Frazier? Um, I, I, I commend your efforts and um, I look forward to having a new, uh, new painting and new flooring in the museum. I think it'll do us a lot of good. And, um, and also, I just wanna make sure that the public knows that when they are making this major change, the museum will have to be closed, correct? The museum will be closed. Um, you'll have to check with Director Dallas um, uh, the exact dates, but for sure from the 13th through the 26th, they will not be open. And that's after the Harvest Fest, so they'll be they'll still be involved in the Harvest Fest and, and be able to participate in that. That's and I hope that after we go through these renovations that the museum will be able to be open more than 20 hours uh, per week. We are um, currently, we do have a full-time director there, and so I think we need to look at expanding our hours at the okay. museum, if at all possible. Thank if you. that means additional help or whatever. The, yeah, it's, okay, thank you. Um, a, 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 where are we? Does anybody else wish to speak on this? I mean, the issue is the master maintenance. Right. 
I'm, I'm looking at the bids here, and, and I'm kind of concerned about the huge difference in the two base bids. One is 78000 one is 33000 And I, could you ex expound on that just a wee bit, the, the huge difference in the bids? Because if they're both the same, they should be a little bit closer, I would think. Well, actually, when we bid out projects like this, there's usually a large fluctuation in price. Um, it depends on, uh, in fact, a lot of our projects recently, we've had a lot of fluctuation in price. Um, what, when we bid out a project, we highlight the goals of what the project needs to maintain, and then we let the contractors who are experts in the field tell us how they would do it and then give us a price. Um, the difference between cross renovation and master maintenance this approach was cross renovations was, um, was, they just bid higher. Their approach was exactly the same. They just wanted, they wanted more money for what master maintenance was providing. So it was pretty much the exact same uh, product. In fact, I talked with Cross after the um, contract was, uh, after the bidding was done and, and they, they said they just missed it. Mm -hmm. They missed the price, they bid it too high. It happens very, very frequently. Just on that, uh, just on that singular point, every single bid we do, after the bid is opened, we call in the, uh, the the bidders and do a you know afterwards bid to make sure that everybody's thinking apples to apples and oranges and oranges. So we don't end up having mm -hmm. a low bid contractor that didn't get it. Okay. Uh, and thank you, Supervisor. And I would also like to express uh, the opinion on the uh, number of hours. Are uh, that's not the issue on this cell. I understand that, yeah. but but we're this is uh, th this is a, a, a renovation. And our residents should be able to have more use for, uh, and acknowledge the renovation and move forward with it. But uh, we need to be open more hours. Okay, thank you. Uh, next slide, um, excuse me, is there anybody else? Hearing none, I have a motion by Treasurer Bud and supported by Trustee Miller. Uh, hearing no further discussion, all in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? The motion passes. Next item is number six. Uh, okay, this is considered our first, first, first reading of Ordinance 10019 to modify the requirements of the zoning ordinance with, a, with regards to required setbacks for non-conforming single family residentials parcels that are on the lake frontage. Can I get a motion? To the board, I make a motion we approve. <laughs> <laughs> Trusty Frazier, you got the oh. second. Oh, wow. <laughs> okay. Thanks a lot. Give You're me welcome. the leftovers. Okay. Uh, director. Yes. Um, as we discussed yesterday, um, the Planning Commission in 2017 um, received information from township staff regarding lakefront lots. The minimum lot width in the township currently is 70 feet. There are some legally non-conforming lots that are were then 70 feet, in particularly along the lake. And there's a handful of these lots. A handful, uh, how many is a handful? Uh, I believe there's between six and eight. I have to double check again. I thought it was six, but okay. It's, it's not, we got an idea. Uh, the zoning ordinance requires a minimum width of 24 feet across the front and rear elevations of a home. Um, and there's also side yard setbacks of at least 25 feet. For lots that are fewer than 50 feet wide, uh, these requirements do not leave a viable building envelope. So along the lakeshore where these lots are uh, valuable and desirable, um, Township Boarding Appeal, Zoning Board of Appeals was receiving request after request to build on lots like this. And the Zoning Board of Appeals then asked staff to look at the concentration of narrower lots in the township, particularly on the lakefront and whether setback requirements should be amended for these lots. The staff presented a couple of options, including creating a separate district with smaller setback, instituting a sliding scale of setbacks, and um, in the experience as a planner um, from other lakeside communities, they, uh, other communities handled this many different ways. It was finally decided that um, that structures would be, uh, that these lots would be given um, a ruling under the zoning ordinance that would allow lakefront lots smaller than 50 feet to have a uh, proportionally uh, smaller setback based on their size and width. 
and uh, it basically reads um, where the lot does not comply with the minimum required lot width, the narrowest side yard shall not be less than five feet or 15% of the lot width, whatever is greater, and the sum of the two side yards shall not be less than 30% of the lot. What this allows the township uh, zoning ordinance to permit is uh, home building on a building envelope of 50 feet, which would allow a 10 foot side yard and a 10 foot side yard, which allows 30 foot building the envelope in the middle, which allows the building to be viable. Um, there's, a, there's a sliding percentage on s how that shifts, uh, but this allows those five or six non-conforming lots to be buildable. Um, okay. This has passed the Township Planning Commission and I bring it to you as the first reading. If you have any questions, I'd be happy to answer it. Trustee Frazier? I'd just like to comment that the lake owners were given an opportunity to comment on this change by the Planning Commission and I think it's a solution that uh, meets meets our needs so that the residents that own those lots uh, do have the option to build. Okay. Anybody else? Supervisor? Trustee White? With only a 50-foot wide lot, uh, does our ordinances allow a shotgun house on those lots? In other words, a very narrow frontage and, and an, a very deep building, for example, maybe 25 by 50 foot deep? If it falls within the building envelope, you can build within the building envelope. So yes. in this, in a 50 foot lot, you can have a 35 foot wide house. And it, depending on how long the lot is would determine the building envelope as well as lot coverage. Lot coverage is, uh, I think it's 30% for most of the residential districts, so. Thank you. Yeah, I, I have to ask this question and I'm, I'm sorry, I. It just came to me. It's not, po is it going to be, po if somebody has a 120 foot lot and they could, and they decide that they want to subdivide their lot to create a 70 and 50 foot lot, we're not going to allow that, are we? You, you, you have to meet the minimum lot width in order to create a lot in the township. Okay, and these, and these are, these are below the minimum lot width that right we currently now they're, have. They're lots that already exist. They're, they're, uh, they're they, non-conforming lots. Okay. And the way our rules are set up, you can't build on them. So okay, I'm just, I'm just trying to, I'm that. just thinking but somebody's gonna think there's a leap loophole where they can spin off 50 feet other side yard and you're saying I, they can't do they that. They cannot do Great. that. Great, okay. Sorry, it just came to me that they could do that, but they can't. All right, is there any other questions? Okay, hearing, okay, I have a uh, Treasurer Bud, uh, Approval, motion for approval, Trustee Frazier seconded for a first reading of the ordinance 10019 to modify the requirements of the zoning ordinance to alter the required setbacks for non-conforming single family residential zone parcels with lake frontage. Hearing no further discussion, all in favor? Aye. Opposed? This motion passes, thank you. Next item is to consider approval of the selection of Natural Community Services for Tree and Brush Removal at French Landing Park. Sure. Trustee Martin. I make a motion to approve the selection of Natural Community Services for Tree and Brush Removal at French Landing Park. Support. Jim Miller. Director Best. Yes. Um, on October, or uh, August 5th, 2019, the Board of Trustees approved the French Landing Park improvements not to exceed $120,000 to be funded by Wayne County Park Millage money that was been signed to us. Phase one, the removal of unsafe playground structure was completed at the end of August. Phase two is currently in progress as Russell Design is developing the master plan, plan for the park. As you're familiar already, we developed a master plan for Quirk Park, uh, which resulted in the fantastic new uh, park amenities that you see today. So this is a very similar process. This next step to phase two is to complete the tree and brush removal at the park in order to increase visibility and safety throughout the site. The township received three complete bids and after careful review and consideration of the proposal, the Department of Public Services is recommending the board approve the selection of natural community services for the French Landing Park tree and brush removal for the alternate bid price of 24,900. This expense is part of the lake and parks budget and the, comes out of the millage money. If approved uh, today, 
The project will begin on Friday. Uh, poison ivy and other areas will be sprayed. Tree removal will begin sporadically throughout the next three months and be completed before the end of the year. Um, if I'd be happy to answer any, uh, any questions um, about the process. Trustee Martin. This project is going to, once again, improve another one of our township parks. I think that uh, the renovation of French Landing Park is long overdue. The removal of this brush will allow uh, a better view of the lake from the road and also from the park itself. You'll get a new playground, and I think it'll be a, once again, it's another uh, improvement to one of our parks. Thank you. Trustee Miller. I forgot to ask this. What about the, the dock? I know this is about the tree removal, but where are we with that? In terms of? French landing needing. Okay, I, I can answer that. Okay. The dock, uh, we performed about $19,000 worth of emergency repair on the dock during the summer. This is because the it was a washout, it was dangerous, there was police tape on it. We then took, uh, got the rotted wood out of there, and then we we power washed and stained it. Ultimately, in five or ten years, you're going to need a new dock, but you've got a few years. Yeah, and that's part of the master plan. Is the dock is being a pro, uh, uh, the future of the dock and the fishing area is part of the master plan. Yeah. Gotcha. Thank you. Okay. Anybody else? Super Trustee Roger. Fraser, and then Trustee White. Okay, I was really impressed by Natural uh, Community Services and their bid. Um, they, it was very detailed. They have a botanist, uh, ecolo uh, you know, naturalist, and they have great credentials. And I think they'll do a super job. I just wanted to say that. And also, I think it's about time that people realize we have a park there. Because when you drive down Haggerty Road, which I live off Haggerty, it's you never know <laughs> where French Landing Park is. <laughs> and, you know, so um, this will bring the park to uh, people that travel there. Uh, it'll be noticed, and they'll make use of it uh, more than they have in the past, I think. But I, I think it's a win-win for the township. Thank you. Trustee White. I noticed that on the uh, uh, September 17th uh, bid for the tree and brush removal bid from Natural Community Services, it's listed base bid as $47,000, but in, in the write-up, it's listed at twenty four nine. We've talked about that at the last meeting, but, um, oh, sorry, Director, go ahead. Yeah, um, so when we first, uh, when we first got the bids back, CHOP was the low bid. Uh, we began our uh, process that Supervisor McNamara kind of alluded to about how we vet our bid pack, bid winners uh, as we move through. CHOP withdrew their bid uh, after discussing what was entailed and what was involved. They withdrew their bid. Um, we were then contacted Natural Community Services and engaged in that process where we asked, here's what we understand your bid means. What do you say the bid means? And as we worked through that process, we actually came to an understanding that they could do it the exact same thing we want, cheaper. And so we negotiated with um, uh, Natural Community Services uh, to reduce their price by almost half in that meeting, um, which was- Give us an example of one of the things that they could do cheaper if they would, were allowed to adjust. So um, one of the, 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 the simpler things that we changed was there are areas of the park which are always, that are not going to be developed uh, in the future. Uh, we know this, that they're not going to be developed. They're either in right-of-ways or they're along the shoreline. And uh, we, we know there's limited uh, potential for development there. So rather than remove those stumps, um, we've, we're burying those, those stumps are being uh, removed below grade and then nature will take its course. They're going to treat them, nature will take its course. It saves us a ton of money, time, and effort. Um, we also, along the roadway, it's the same thing. We know the areas in the road right away. We're not going to be building on those areas. Now, if we do decide to do something there, um, like a sanitary sewer or utility, those utilities are below the areas that we'll be working in. So it, that saved us money. Um, 
we went in the natural areas where we're reclaiming the, they were taking the trees and the understory down and putting, uh, removing the trees and taking the canopy away and exposing bare soil areas to um, the sunlight again. Um, turf grass seed does, and this is going back from one of my previous jobs, turf grass seed does not outcompete the native seed bank that's in the ground. So what we would have ended up happening, uh, according to natural ser community services, we would have planted turf grass there and the turf grass would be outcompeted and then we'd have to weed it and spray it and do it again and again and again. Um, the process that they have, they use a native grass that um, will promote growth and promote um, uh, beating out the weed, the weeds that we don't want, the undesirable plants that we don't want. And over a year to a uh, year and a half period, we'll be able to transition to a more turf grass uh, complement and mow it and it will outcompete and win for less chemical, less cost, less maintenance. So we saved probably most of the money kit saved on the non the putting leaving the stumps in place in areas that we needed to and when we saved probably about a thousand dollars changing from a native seed mix from the sod or turf grass so anybody else hearing that i have a motion by tr uh, trustee martin is supported by trustee miller uh for the national community services hearing no further discussion all in favor aye Opposed? This motion passes. Next item is to consider approval of the final design of the Township Hall electronic message sign. Can I get a motion? Supervisor, I make a motion to consider approval of the final design of the Township Hall electro electronics message sign designed by Virias Environmental Graphics and Signs, known as Vegas, for the final cost of $54,090 with the expense to be paid under the building and grounds capital outlay account. Support. Okay, I have a motion to support. Director. As Trustee Frazier said, it, for the communications people today, it's time to get our message out to the people. Um, one of the things that the board has asked our office to do is to get our message out onto Tyler Road and identify where we are as a township. Um, the electronic message sign project is part of the CIP plus projects that we've been working on for the, and getting ready to bring to you this year and finish up. This is one of the last ones left to be completed. We had three companies, you've approved Veris Vegas sign as the winner. Their initial bid was for 20, uh, 29 nine and change, but we, that was the base bid. We then took all the comments and um, uh, recommendations that we received from the trustees and talking to just comments we've heard from people what they would want to see and put together um, the uh, following product. Uh, 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 nope. I'm hoping that the TVs will turn on. Um, Perfect. So it's, um, if you notice, um, it is the Van Buren Township Hall sign. This would go out in the median out in front of Township Hall's main entrance. It, uh, the top is uh, to symbolize the lake and the lake community. It's a wave. And then we have um, the Township logo, which is near and dear to our hearts. Uh, we have the large, the purple areas electronic message sign. Um, <coughs> We have a stone uh, uh, ledge and then the, the address, it's lit not only at night by the lights within the sign and the lettering, but there's also ground lights that go up onto the sign to light the address at it. Um, the LED display is a state-of-the-art LED display that uh, we've talked about in the past. For that, that the design should be done sometime this year and uh, implementation of the gateway signage will begin uh, next year, early. So, which is already in the budget. Yeah. It, 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 you know, I, people sometimes don't get why it takes so long, but think about it. These things are not things that we're gonna be putting up for five and 10, 20 years. <laughs> These are 50 year items. I mean, this is gonna be there for 25, 30 years. This is, so just get it right, do it right. 
it hurts, I know. But, but the more forethought, the better the product. Exactly. So I, I know we received an email asking questions about input, our input. So mm -hmm. that helps in the process, and you see the end result. Mm -hmm. So kudos. Okay. Um, hearing no further comments, I have a mo motion by Trustee Miller, supported by Treasurer Bud, uh, to purchase the new sign. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? This motion passes. It will be up and running by. Um, I'm Ejected. hopeful we can watch Home Alone at Thanksgiving <laughs> out there on the on lawn chairs. That'd be fun. Or the football game. Or the football game, the Lions football game. We could watch oh. that too. Well. <laughs> <laughs> okay. All right. All right. Next item is to consider approval of the update to Section Three Eligibility of Benefits and Policy and Procedures Manual. Uh, Clerk Wright. And Director Sumter, Director Sumter, we're going to Clerk Wright. This this is the um, this is the mandatory uh, moment when every year we the state wants us to, to uh, take 20 percent from our employees. Oh, that's not the well, no, that's not this one. Nope. What is this one? This is this was putting in place in our policy manual for uh, you know, for oh the the, the full time coverage. yeah okay. Um, uh, all right, this is the one where we basically have a, we used to hire temps, and now we have, is that the one? No. Which one is this? Who is no, it? I, Nicole, it. you're up. Number nine. <laughs> we said it, we said it right the second time. Second time was? That's the temporary full time. This is, yeah, we don't have a, we don't have a designation for temporary full time. That's where we're at. Ready? Yeah. The section that we were updating um, in the policy and procedures manual was 3.01 to officially add the temporary full-time position. We also wanted to include the in lieu of a $500 for that temporary full-time person when they came in. It was just one item <clears throat> that was not included and we wanted to make sure everybody was represented. So with that, I will take any questions. Fraser, uh, Trustee. Uh, yesterday I expressed my concern about $500 in lieu of for a temporary employee. This person could only work six months maybe three months, depends. And they're gonna get $500 uh, a month. Is that right, 500 a month? If they do not take the coverage, yes. Right, if they don't take the coverage. Right. Okay, so uh, you know, the trustees, we get 250 in lieu of if we don't take the coverage. So I think $500 is excessive that's over a hundred dollars extra in their paycheck every week it turns out and it's not against the employees but they're temporary you know if this was full time and the they idea. were getting full time the idea is that temporary will turn into full time for these people i understand eventually okay yes. i'd like to respond to that because okay. th because this was discussed like three years ago when we first started our board <laughs> meetings the idea of giving uh, employees five hundred dollars was to keep them out of the nine, fifteen, eighteen thousand dollar fringe benefit package they get. Once they hit the thirty hours, the Obamacare kicks in. Then you've got to give them health care. They're now into fourteen thousand dollars, I think, on average, for uh, for health care. So the idea is to give them five hundred dollars instead of that. As for the trustees getting the two fifty. This board, it was my recommendation that you take the 500. You guys are the ones that reverted to the 250 years ago. If you ever want to revisit that, I would be happy to not pay health care and pay two, pay 500 instead, because health care is too, very, very expensive. It's just, it just makes sense to get people off our health care system. So that, that's what this is about. Uh, a, a trustee Miller than for a white. So, would a contractor 
What's the difference between a temporary and a contractor? The contractor is not an employee. They work when they want to work. They don't have a schedule set by us. They're 1099. We don't pay their taxes. We don't pay their insurance. But the temporary full-time person, because that's how they're brought in, not through a temp service, we pay everything for them. So why is this, um, why are they temporary? Because in this particular department, it's for a season, which is, I'll just say it is for the elections. And usually he hires a full-time person to cover that during this time. And this year he got hit with more than one election that's coming up. Some things popped up and they need coverage for it. In addition, we had a couple of people that were out on medical leaves that had to be covered as well. So that's how we got the temporary full-time person. However, I want to mention she's not the first one. Okay. And no one, that particular classification has never been represented. Trustee White. If we go back to uh, 2016 during the election, every trustee was given health care insurance or payment in lieu of. But when I won the election in 2016, the decision was made that we would eliminate health care for uh, uh, trustees and eliminate payment in lieu of. And the motion was formed where this would take effect in uh, November 20, 2020. On the, on the next date, so. Uh, I, 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 actually, 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 we could have that debate at a work study. I would argue, argue would argue that, but on the other side is we're, we're discussing the employee policy for, for full-time temper. temper. And, and I understand that. So if you that, wanna have a work study on that, I'd be happy to have but, it. But, but I understand what, what we're discussing, but it was brought up about the trustees and, and the uh, payment in lieu of. Because so, it keeps so, on so, coming so, up, so, and so, I don't so, think people remember where it came from. So, so, but once it was bought up, then that it opens the floor. And yes, we can have a, a discussion on that. But I, I do not think that four trustees sitting here will just randomly give up money that they are entitled to payment in lieu of or insurance if they choose to take insurance. It's, it's been that. historical that, 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 that they've taken it. If they want to give it up, okay, okay, they'll so give it up. Do you have any comments on the full-time temporary? On full-time temporary? Well... I stated those comments yesterday at, at the work okay. study, and uh, I, I don't think we should hire full-time temporary. We should haul, hire 28-hour part-timers and not worry about paying health care, insurance, or, or benefits. Mm -hmm. and, and, and I understand that uh, it would be uh, – we can hire two 28-hour employees. Well, 29. A whole, well, or 20, 20 or 29, much cheaper than we can hire one at 40 and pay them the, the benefits and, and everything else. Okay, thank you. Is there anybody, uh, one second, you, we have to go once around before I, I go for the second time around. Is there anybody else that wants to make comment on this? Hearing none, we'll go into the second round. Frazier, or Trustee Frazier. I think uh, Trustee White makes a good point that we, uh, the difference between part-time and uh, temporary full-time is one hour. So we could hire uh, two individuals at 29 hours each, and we could get a look at two individuals rather than just one individual that could be potential employees down the line. And we wouldn't have to worry about paying health care or in lieu of. So to me, I'm supposed to watch out for the residents' uh, money and to me, that is just good fiscal responsibility that we should be doing rather than hiring full-time temporary. We're giving a full-time temporary $6,000 more in wages if they stay with us for a year. And I think that's, you know, unreasonable. But that's just my opinion. I want to be cost-effective for the residents, and I think hiring two 29-hour people would be more cost-effective. We could get a look at two individuals and see if they are potential employees for our township, rather than just hiring one person and giving them health care or in lieu of and just having that one person on the job. Thank you. Clerk Wright? I wasn't going to say anything, but you guys forced me to. So 
I, I, I mean, we, we had plenty of conversation over this last night, but I, I can't help but explain myself again. It's the, it's the trustee's responsibility to be fiduciary members of the board, and you set the budget, and we've done that. We budget here, and we just had our budget public hearing tonight. It's my job to run the clerk's office. And my, and the, and my initiative to run the clerk's office is that instead of hiring two part-time individuals, I'm hiring one temporary full-time. And that's the way I see that the fiscal responsible for running my office, and that's the way I see the best way to do the work and get them trained in my office, and that's the way I see the best equip my office for um, ongoing uh, concessions and maybe possible retirement, and that's may happen in my office. It's my responsibility to run the clerk office. Um, I talked to this. I brought this forth beforehand. I explained what was the need behind it, why we did it. Uh, in 2016, uh, in, our, in, the last, in the last election, not 2016, but 2017, I hired three individuals, two part-time, one full-time temporary employee. We paid that individual for full-time benefits because he elected to. If you hire someone over 30 hours, they have the right to receive benefits. The only thing that we're doing with the policy is putting the that, that language in the policy because once they're deemed full-time, they have the same rights as any other full-time employee. And if you don't recognize those rights, you're violating the federal government's mandate. That's the only thing we add to the policy so that what was silent in the, in the policy is now is being shown that it's there. And the Treasury Board brought it to my attention, and I agree that it needs to be put in the policy so it can be, it can be shown. Uh, that's the only thing. It has no name behind it. It has no issue. This person, if I was asked, probably would to, in order to keep the job, probably wouldn't even take uh, the insurance, period. It's the principle behind that nature. It's not what, who it is or what they should do or who are trying to tell me what to do, how, how to run my department. It's the principle behind, behind is that if they work full time, they're entitled to insurance or in lieu of. And that's it's the bottom temporary. line. But it's still full time. Temporary can be a year. It can be two years. It can be three years. It don't matter. Temporary. It's just they're not permanent. Okay. That's all set. That's that's that's, that's it. Clerk, uh, is there anybody else that wishes to speak, Trustee White? Clerk, I certainly appreciate your uh, uh, input on this. I came from a business. Uh, uh, a, a, a very, very competitive business company that was where, where we did have unions. And I understand the business prospects of uh, PODC, plan, organize, direct, and control. And there's many ways that we could save money in this township if we would uh, approach our, our government like a business, our, our revenue comes from our residents. I don't care if it's a grant, comes from Washington, comes from Wayne County, comes from the state of Michigan. Every penny that lays on this table comes from our residents in one form or another. We need to do everything possible to do what we can do to make the residents 100% beneficial from every penny that we spend. I see lots of waste that, uh, that, that goes across this board I don't want to get into the to the gutter with it, and and I see lots of ways that, that we could save money. Uh, I I think that we need to take more of a business approach, because this is a business, but it's a public business, and politics aside, then, then once we're elected, we have to become business people to run this business of seventeen million dollars a year. I think the budget is someplace close to that. Run the services for the township, and all. Uh, apportionments that are that, that are equal to that to take care of our residents. That's our primary goal: to give our residents benefits, public safety, protection, and I'd, I'd like to say roads, but that's not in, <laughs> not in our area of uh, of concern. It's in our area of concern, but it's not in our area of, of uh, taking care of that issue. So, I, I would think that every time we sit down at this table, that we should do that. 
Every action should be to the benefit of our residents and flex, flex people. Uh, and, but I, I can tell you that, that there's many people, housewives, whatever, would be happy to have a, a job making 24 or, or 28 hours a week, uh, especially if their husbands are working or, or whatever. And we need to look at it from a business point of view. We are a business in the public arena. And I, I can tell you, to my concern, we waste a lot of money. Thank you. Thank you. Treasurer, um, uh, trustee, uh, Treasurer Bud spoke and then Martin. I would just like to say that I think we are doing justice to the budgets. We're doing justice to the residents because he runs his clerk's office and he needs somebody because of the intricacy of elections, the need to be always on sharp, always right there. It's hard to bring in part-time people who are looking for jobs because they don't stick with it because they are looking for full-time jobs and they're moving on. So this gives him the possibility to have a temporary full-time person who is there, who is trained so that they can do all of the jobs that are necessary in the clerk's office. And I think he is very prudent in what he has decided to do to run his office. Trustee Martin. I just, I just did a little math, and, and, and you say that you could hire two part-time employees for at 29 hours per week. So those two employees would would put in 58 hours a week in time versus the temporary, the full-time temporary, which work 40 hours per week. Say those, it's an 18-hour a week difference. Say they made, I'm going to just throw a number out, $10 an hour. That would come out to $9,360 versus the $6,000 per year that you would pay for in lieu of. Thank so you, Chair. I believe that this is the most economical way to go. Through the chair. Um, yes. Okay. I would like Second to make call. a motion. Actually, the motion's already been. No, I have uh -uh. A there wasn't a motion made. I have oh my, I'm sorry, I did not. Reggie, uh, Trustee Miller didn't have a chance to say anything. Trust, uh, right the first time, but on okay, the second, second time I didn't. Is that okay. all right? The, and that would that would pretty much end it for everybody except for Trustee Martin. Go ahead. The pressure's on me. So, a I temporary. To to Do you want to say something? I'm just gonna read, just make sure. I'm sorry. Okay. You know I have a at. question. So, if we have summer em um, employment, we have people that work seasonal. That's also temporary. Is it a law that we have to give this benefit benefits? Because it says here, because it says here, part-time and temporary employees are not eligible for benefits unless otherwise required by law or is otherwise provided. So explain that. That's kind of confusing here. Well, the part-time people don't get the benefits. The seasonal that you're referring to is typically in parks and rec, and they work under the hours, and it's probably about I'd probably hire about 15 to 16 um, individuals a summer. So they all fluctuate to make sure that Parks and Rec has coverage. They will not be eligible for benefits. The temporary person that's listed in there is not required to get benefits under ACA because typically they're coming through a temporary service. The temporary service pays for their benefits. benefits. Yes. Okay. So. This person, though, this temporary in the clerk's office is full-time, correct? Yes. 40 hours. Yes. So 40 hours versus two split. I, I understand where, where Trustee Martin's going here. How many temporaries have we had in a, over a year, say a year span? I was one of them. Okay. I came in as a temporary full-time person for the clerk during elections. We've had... No, we had a couple of temp people that came through the temp agency, and he's and had two time. additional ones last year, this year. And okay. that's just in the time frame I've been here. We had an intern. And two interns. And interns are considered? They were temporary. They were 20 hours or so. Okay. Right. But this is a full-time person. Yes. Re regardless if they're full t or temporary or not. My, okay, so my other question is, is there a probationary period that they have to be before, that they have to achieve in order to get, you know, like 90 days like most 
They don't no, get, they're no. not, they okay. don't, they don't, they're not to be a part, they don't get to be a part of the union. They don't, they're not, they're not the union. The rule for non-union. Certain benefits they don't get. The only thing they are eligible is for health, health, health insurance, care. Health, health and dental. That's it. All right. Thank you. Okay. Um, Trustee, uh, Treasurer Bud, could you? I would make a motion that we approve the update to section 30.1 eligibility of benefits and policies and procedures manual. I support that, and with, and with that support, I would just like to say, I'll do respect to you, Trustee White, by telling me what you did in your in your past, and I'm sure you did it well. I've also come from a business background, which I think I can say the same, but I don't compare it with this job. It's totally different. I respect what everyone says when and when we're in uh, budget hearing, and I respect your comments. But I also want you to respect me that I have the worth all to run my department, and I do run it fiscally responsible. And if, if you can, if I would challenge any of you to look at the history of the clerk's office, the clerk's elections, office supplies, any any uh, one that I that I'm in charge of is streamlined, is very efficient, is innovative. And we, and we, and we, we talk, we work with each other to make sure that that it stays that way. I do not waste money. I'm very aware that I spend taxpayers' money, and I don't waste it. I spend it very efficiently. I just wanted to bring that to your attention. Thank you, Leon, or Clerk Rat. I'm sorry. And and probably gone through I, two. I, I but I understand. I understand okay. that, and this was not meant to be a personal attack against you. He, 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 and 30 seconds. And, and uh, hold on. It's not a personal attack against Leon. I'm, I'm only doing my job as I'm supposed to do to control the amount of money that we spend in the township. Okay, I have a motion by Treasurer Buzz, supported by Clerk Wright. Hearing no further discussion. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Nay. Motion? Okay. We'll call vote, please. Trustee, uh, Trustee Faye Frazier. Nay. Trustee Miller? Yes. Trustee Martin? Yes. Trustee White? No. Treasurer Bud? Yes. Yes for me, Supervisor? Yes. Motion passes. Thank you very much. We're moving on to consider approval of resolution 2019-23 to exempt the township from the 2011 Public Act 152. Um, Director Sumter and Clerk Wright are giving this. I need a motion, yeah. I don't want to make that mistake again. Can I get a motion? motion. Clerk Wright? Through the chair. I make the motion to uh, adopt resolution 2019-23, your annual exemption opt out. Okay, second? Support. Mr. Bud? Uh, Nicole, uh, Director Sumter, I'm sorry, did you take over? Each year the board has opted out of the um, resolution 2019-23, which is 2011, I'm sorry, 2011 Public Act 152. This is to keep us at the 10%. You can either go to the hard cap or you can do the 20%. The township has historically, again, opted out for the 10% for the employees. We do not go with the hard cap, and we don't allow, we don't ask our employees to pay more than 10% of their insurance every month. So you have the resolution in front of you. I am asking for you to approve the opt-out as we do each year. And with that, I will take any questions. Well, so we have a clerk right who um, was a co-person uh, on this well, one. Thank you, uh, Director Sumter. In 2011, when the, the Act 152 was enacted, it was brought to the Township Board to uh, make a decision whether we do the high cap, which is really exactly what it says, is a high cap. The 80-20, uh, you have the option to opt out. At that time, the board decided to opt out and impose the 10%. Later, later on, it was brought to the attention of our third-party administrator, who is our uh, IBEX, the gentleman named Ted Supers. The treasurer and I, we met with him and talked about other initiatives and also Director Sumter, other initiatives to save money along this arena without going to the 20%. And he brought forth a program at that time, which was, was HRA, Healthcare Reduction Account. That plan, what it does, it 
bills us the, you know, for insurance based on employ our employees going going to the it based us on the assumption that our employees previously not 150 let's say we have 150 employees it's based on we currently were paying at 150 employees going to the doctor in October which is this is first of second first of October instead of paying based on 150 employees going to the doctor in October it we actually pays on on who actually goes to the hospital with a higher or go to the doctor with a higher uh, uh, deductible that the book that deductible bring bring forth significant savings last year alone I just got the I, I emailed and got made sure I got the results for the day so we can have it last year utilizing uh, what were a merit choice now we've changed to a, a company called EHIM who looks like going with the last three months it's going to bring us even more savings utilizing the HRA and our 10 percent that we take from the employees which is two equates to two hundred and twelve thousand dollars a year along with the savings that we are required through the HRA which is three hundred ninety thousand dollars a year we uh, we 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 observe six hundred and two thousand dollars in savings six hundred and two thousand dollars two thousand eight the, the fiscal year April th 2018 through March 31st 2019 I also have the three months that this program has been on the EHIM and it's on track to save us two seven hundred and fifty thousand dollars for the next uh, year I mean the fiscal year that's significant savings if we backtrack and change to the to the 20 percent Let's let you make sure that you understand that you can't change to the twenty percent and do HRA just willy nilly. You have to negotiate. We have unions and that we that we do business with here. We have POC, MAF, ASME, and Command. We negotiated these HRA with these unions because not only did it save us money, it saved them money because they're paying on who actually go to the hospital versus who pay the, the total amount. So their deductible is cheaper, that that 10% is cheaper too. If, let's say we throw that away and we go back to what some people recommend and we do 20%, $212,000, that's 10%. If you double that, that's 20%, right? That's $424,000. It don't take a rocket science to see that we're behind the cart. I can tell you that the union is you go to the union, they're not going to negotiate 20% plus our age saving plan. That's a hard negotiation, and it has to be negotiated. We, we make these assumptions not thinking the whole thing out that we do have other parties that we have that we deal with here, and I think we've, we have built alliance with our unions, all of them. We have a m much better relationship with all our unions, and they understand we just – Negotiated a a, uh, a issue here that a lot of communities are still toying with. That it takes years and years to negotiate it. We sit down and negotiate it with them, and we've done it and we voted on it tonight, and it's and it's, it's a done deal. That's huge. Once we develop the opportunity to sit down and and and, and uh, expand on the idea that we're not here to uh, hurt our unions, we're here to be partners with our union. The contract is a two-way communication piece it's not our goal to violate the contract and they and, and we look at that likewise we don't want them to violate our policies and they, I think they're bought into that we have a much better relationship we are able to sit down and negotiate and what they call in good faith and we come out with good faith initiatives and this is one of them that's the opt out that's why we're asking you to opt out to, to uh, one at 152 Okay. All right. Begin. Trustee Frazier. I just want to say I do not agree at all with uh, the perception that we're saving that much money. Who's paying HRA to lower our deductible? 
Where are they getting the money for that? That's never been explained to me. If this system is so it. great, you, you don't explain it. You just throw out some figures. I'm just saying, if this system was so great, I wonder why other townships, cities, schools don't adopt this policy. They do. They do. They don't. They don't. They're still charging their employees 20%. It's okay. Not We're paying ours are are getting ten percent. Good, but I don't see that it's good fiscal responsibility. Yeah. I still do not see that it's good fiscal responsibility, and I think we have excellent employees, and that they do a great job. But I think that most people in the business world where I come from, they pay twenty percent of their. Um, their their insurance and i think most individuals in our township probably pay 20 percent of their insurance if not more there's a lot of people in our township that can't even afford insurance so they're getting they're having to pay 600 dollars a month instead of you know 20 percent so i i just do not accept the explanation, and I'm sorry, but it doesn't, it doesn't wash out for me. And I haven't, I'd like to have you send over who's paying HRA to lower our employees. Insurance business is a money maker. Insurance business is one of the largest, largest money makers in this country, next to pharma, and uh, the oil industry. So the insurance company isn't giving away the, the, uh, the goods for nothing. Somebody's paying somewhere. And I'm smart enough to know that, so I'm sorry. I do not accept the explanation that the clerk has given. Can, can, I, can I go? Can actually, I no, that actually again? no, we're in, we're in discussion phase right now. Let so. Me, let me explain that again. The third party paid a high deductible. Who's the third party? EHIM at the current moment. It's EHIM. And where are they getting the money if they're paying the higher? They charge a higher deductible. When you go to the doctor, instead of you paying $30, you pay $10. And IHIM paid the $20 based on who actually comes, goes to the doctor. We get billed on occurrences, not billed on every base, Listen. On every person going to the, the doctor for that month. You know, I understand I, I'm going to explain that. it to okay. you. I don't know. That's okay. it. I'm, if you, it, if you it can't it, it doesn't. That's your problem. I don't all accept right. it. That's okay, all okay, I want to okay, say. I don't okay. accept so, it. So, okay, you can't make drink. Does who, who, who else wants to talk here on this? Trustee Martin. So, if we went to the hard cap, what would it cost the township? Uh, do you have any idea what it would cost the township? Actually, is it a, we is did it a great, do that for big, the budget uh, hearing. What was that number? No, we did not do that for the time. We have to go cap. through IBEX to get those numbers, and we, since we opt out every year, we've never had to do mm -hmm. that. The analysis, uh, and, and we previously we, we found that it was a significant savings to do it the way we're doing it now versus right. the hard cap. That's what we did. So I, I'm saying I don't, mm. I'm not going to turn my nose up at saving 600 plus thousand dollars and really uh, saving 600 me. I'm sorry, two. I'm sorry, I sure. the chair. Then what was the figure that you read, Clerk Wright? You know, I I, I wrote it down. I, we're saving three hundred ninety thousand dollars through through the HRA, and two hundred twelve thousand dollars through the co through the ten percent copay. So total, that's six hundred two thousand dollars. That's the last year. And this year we're on track to uh, with the two to occur the savings of seven hundred seven hundred fifty thousand dollars. That's paperwork. I can I can run this off. I can and give put it and send it to you. Maybe you can read rather than you can understand. Do. But I, right. I can re, I can send it to you, and you can uh, and you can look at it that way. Okay. All right. All right. Hold on. Trustee Martin has has the floor still, and, and everybody's been stepping all over him, and I, I've been I gotta start saying things. It's and don't okay. hate me. If I'm okay. disrespected, Trustee I'm gonna Martin. be. I'm not. I can be disrespectful. Hmm. Trustee Martin. I'm not. Like I said, I'm not gonna turn my nose up at at these uh, significant savings. That's 
you know, you talk about fiscal responsibility, we the fiduciaries and all of that. And I think this is a prime example of us doing our job and our saving the township money. I think Clerk Wright has done a, a great job in, in bringing this forward. He has. It and not I, just me. I'm, I'm not going to take this. Well, I'm this just, was not, it was Clerk Wright, Treasurer Bud, and, and HR Director who knew, uh, did these negotiations. Clerk Wright didn't do this by itself. Well, okay. I'm, when I'm, I'm, doing the, I'm just doing the thing. Well, I'm saying we got to go round once, okay? All right. We've worked together to to come up with these savings are significant, and I I appreciate all of you hard your hard work and effort. And I I don't know what's hard to understand about saving this okay. much money. Trustee Miller. Okay, so here's the problem with this whole thing. When you have an overloaded agenda like we did, and sometimes that happens. It, it does, we had a council meeting, we had a township under construction, but when you put items on the agenda such as this, and it is significantly important, and you don't get enough time to look at it, to get with the clerk, to get your questions answered, you're throwing around figures of 150 employees and significant savings of over 600,000, then you got questions and it becomes a discussion which turns into a heated debate. That's problematic. Now, I understand some of it, but some of it I don't, and I, I would like to fully support it one way or another, and some of it I, I get, but some of it I just don't because we have to explain it to the public. Look, a lot of places are, you're paying 20%. In, in the corporate world, if you work outside the township, you are, and you have those deductibles, and you have those yearly expenses, and you have to pay $60 to see a doctor, to go to a doctor and, and um, pay for added um benefits you have to buy those in addition to paying the 20 percent so i would like to have a, a real clear vision on this and i think you do too mm -hmm. to fully support it one way or another and put it to rest once and for all so i would like to postpone this get with you in the next couple of weeks until our next board meeting and then bring it back and then we'll have our answers and, and I'm not saying you haven't done that, but to the degree that I feel we need, I think we should postpone this. Okay, hold up. Okay, before anybody does anything for a second here, okay? Let me ask a few questions, okay? And then we'll move forward with it wherever you want to go. Number one, we have time to do this, correct? We do have time. Number two, this isn't going to jeopardize any union negotiation by us not passing this. We've already negotiated with the union. Their contracts are closed. Okay, so there's nothing that's going to badly happen if we move this thing to the next meeting. Okay, you wanted to make a motion, I believe. I'd like to make a motion to postpone this until our next meeting, but in the meantime, get your questions to the clerk. Meet with him, reach okay. out. A motion, I will. A, mo I will. a motion for postponement is non-debatable okay. and immediately goes to a vote. Uh, so all in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Nay. Nay. Okay, so roll call. Start on this side. Trustee White? Postponed. Trustee Martin? Proceed. Trustee Miller? Postponed. Trustee Frazier? Postponed. Treasurer Bud? I don't think it needs to be postponed. This is an item that we have faced every year for the last few years since we started. Uh, I don't understand why all of a sudden nobody understands what's happening, so I, do, I don't think it's necessary. We've done the same every single year. We've had this description every year. Obviously, not to the satisfaction Obviously. of the if board. You guys want to have a board members, on, you can. It's decision but either I'm, way, I'm, but I'll do it. Oh, I'd like to move forward with the today. I'd like to ask. I vote no to the next move forward. And I with that. Is also I'd like to ask uh, Trustee Wait. Martin. Hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. Before that, before we're moving that, forward. I think the, the main thing is that Treasury Board brought to my attention. This morning, also, it's not. It's more than just we do this every year, and we do this every year. But we we do negotiation every four years, and when we do negotiations, I know we sent out a memo saying, "Is there anything that you would like to be brought to the, the negotiation that fits your interest?" And we didn't receive anything. This is when that's when this supposed to be brought forth. 
You don't bring forth this in the middle of a contract. You bring this forth this in, at, in, at the beginning of negotiations. We get, we get nothing, and then we get all of this chatter during the year and coming up to whatever election year or whatever, that everything needs to be changed all of a sudden. We're not being fiscally responsible. And I'm showing you the numbers here. I don't understand what the numbers vary from. You're telling us the numbers. We, us the numbers. I've, I've we've given never, you this. I've we've given never you this seen the yes, numbers. I gave no, you, I've given you this we before. Yes, we have. I, no, I'll, we haven't. I'll, 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 yes, we have. I'll print it off and make sure you, I send it to you tomorrow. We shouldn't be doing that. I'll put, I'll put it together well, again I'm and make sure, sure I send it to you Well, I'm sure the General Motors and the UAW would be very, very interested in this plan. Okay, what? Ocean negotiated. Yeah. Martin, okay, you hold bring on a second. To GM. Hold on. I okay. You guys can have a workshop on this if you want one. I don't mind. We've done it before. We can do it again, and we can do it again until everybody understands it. At this point in time, I heard somebody I thought say call the question. I Did said I hear call that? Call the question. All right, I heard a call the question. So, call the question Make is non-debatable. All in favor of calling the question? Aye. Aye. Opposed. The question is called. We have a motion by uh, Clerk Wright. It is supported by Treasurer Bud to consider approval of Resolution 2019-23 to exempt the township from 2011 Public Act 152. Uh, all in favor? We had a motion by Miller it. to call the question. It passed. It passed. When did it pass? It no, 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 no. You gotta do the vote now. It, it did not pass. What passed before was, was, the, was, was the postponement. But the uh, postponement uh, uh, failed. did not pass. Postponement failed. The call to question passed. You have not that voted on this failed. yet. The, the postponement <laughs> failed. We did not vote on this. Okay. Let's vote. All right. Vote. So, again, I have a vote motion by Clerk Wright uh, and uh, supported by Treasurer Bunn. All in favor of line item number 10, which is exempt the township for 2011 Public Act 152. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? No. no. Roll call. And we've done this just previously. No, but I do it again. Okay. So, yes, we did. <laughs> Trustee White. Trustee no. Frazier. Trustee oh. Frazier. No. Trustee Martin. Yes. Trustee Miller. No. Treasurer Bud. Yes. Yes for me. Yes. Supervisor. Yes. Motion passes. Motion passes. Next item, reports. We have none. Next item after that, public comment for non-agenda items. Is anybody from the public wishing to speak? I don't know. <laughs> no, just, just um, I'm the union president for the POLC, the police and dispatchers union. Uh, just a few things. Me, Treasurer Bud, Clerk Wright, we work tirelessly to be fiscally responsible. They are the hardest people to negotiate with. But at the very end of the day, they do what's in the best interest yeah. for, for the township. Minute, but you, you say something to me, but that's disrespectful. And I'm going to call it out. Every time it's happening, well, it's disrespectful for you to disrespect somebody like that. I think you're that. interrupting okay, our speakers. Let's get through this, okay? I just wanted to say, first of all, thank you to the members that did vote to opt out um, and not change the contracts. Um, that's one reason I was here tonight, to observe and report back to my membership what the result was. But ultimately, I also want to thank um, the negotiation team that works tirelessly with us to make sure that we are fiscally responsible in the public safety department. We don't always get what we want. It's a hard negotiation, but ultimately, I will say I'm very proud of the board for I'm being fiscally responsible. Um, and so I did want to thank the members on the board for um, doing the debate, but ultimately coming to this conclusion. Uh, thank you, board. Thank you very much. The chair, if I may. It wasn't to support 20% or 10%. No. My, it my standing was to postpone it so that yes. everyone had a better understanding, understanding of this. Understanding of it. Can you, oh, forget it. I appreciate it. I mean, it wasn't we, we, 20 we, we, or 10 you know, that we voted together. on. And, you know, as well, um, I don't take away from anybody on this board. There's not the time to do that. Um, what I say is thank you, but I think when I keep hearing the community saying we're not fiscally responsible, we're not fiscally responsible, we're extremely fiscally responsible. 
and uh, even going forward with a ne negotiated item with healthcare, uh, we're also going to take some concessions and show the township through our union and working with our board that we are fiscally responsible, that we do stand behind our board, that we want to make sure our residents um, pay um, the least amount that they could possibly pay and get the job done. And so ultimately, it just, you know, I'm, I'm a resident as well of this township. And so they continuously hear we're not fiscally responsible. We're making all these decisions to be fiscally responsible. It does hurt at times. But trust me, you and I have worked together on many things, and I, I respect you as a board member, but I do thank the good negotiation team, and I thank every last member that voted yes to opt out of this tonight. Thank you. I respect Thank this you. board's decision. I absolutely respect your decision. I'm not saying that this person is fiscally responsible. This person is not. I'm saying I am. And uh, I just we're, okay. We yeah. are into we I are, we like are in the board say, comments. Yeah. You would like to take your board comment now. You're welcome to. I, I was voting tonight to get further information that I would like to understand this in writing and that's what i was voting on i wasn't voting on 10 or 20 percent um so that's misconstrued if it is okay um does anybody else wish to speak i'm not okay so let's very good uh <laughs> can i get a motion for adjournment I'll make a motion to adjourn I support have a second support hearing nobody else it's adjourned so you know Let's